Hey guys, Alan Watkins, Technology Transformation Management. Really excited today to have Shane and Todd with Megaport here. Uh, for those clients that aren't familiar with Megaport, but are using a multi-cloud strategy uh, or multi-data center globally strategy, this is something that uh, has excited uh, some clients enough to take off the rest of the day and go fishing. Um, it had, at the same time, saved a client a significant amount of budget and it is put control in your own hands. This is what uh, IT guys and infrastructure guys have been dreaming about for years. Uh, Megaport, if you haven't heard of them, uh, I wouldn't quite call them a startup. They've been taking over the world. They're Australian based, they're fantastic. Gentlemen, Shane, Todd, introduce yourselves. Absolutely, thanks for having us today, Alan. Uh, so Shane McCluskey, um, sales director here at Megaport. Um, we've been with the company for almost um, two years now. Um, so also on the line is Mr. Todd Wendell, our solutions architect. Todd, I'm not sure if you wanted to say a few words. Sure. Hey guys, uh, Todd Wenzel. Again, I'm a solutions architect for Megaport. Been with the company going on three months and I am based in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you guys for having us. No problem. So guys, we've had some real successes with you guys in higher ed, power, dist power and power distribution, uh, as well as retail. Help my audience know who is Megaport. Oh, absolutely. Um, again, Alan, thank you, thank you for having me. And uh, just to kind of give you guys a, a brief, high-level overview, without going into the weeds too much, and just to expound a little bit more on what uh, you know what Alan was saying there in the introduction is, uh, you know, Megaport was founded back in 2013. Um, serial entrepreneur by the name of uh, Bevan Slattery, um, who created Megaport with one goal in mind, and that was to make you know private interconnections as easy and seamless as possible. Um, and that could be point to points between specific co-location data centers or to any of the hyperscalers um, that you see here listed on this slide. So since 2013, circa 2013, since our birth um, up to 2020, we've obviously seen a lot of change and adaptation, you know, in the market when it comes to IT infrastructure and what, you know, our enterprise customers are doing um, you know, with their applications and so whether they want to keep that in-house on-prem or push that up to the cloud. And so, you know, there's a lot that we see um, that's on our customers' plate in terms of, you know, driving uh, innovation and functionality. Um, and what we're trying to do really is just take the, take the burden out of the network, but also extending, um, you know, increased functionality as well as securing you know, that network into those critical workloads that our customers are currently, you know, um, accessing today in some of these public cloud hyperscaler environments. Um, so essentially uh, what we're doing um, is it's one connection, you know, inside of one of the Megaport enabled um, data centers uh, that we have, that have a point of presence in, you know, across the globe up to, you know, 500 plus data centers now as it stands today and constantly expanding our footprint. Uh, through one single connection, you can, you can access, manage, and right size um, your connectivity essentially through one pane of glass um, to any of the hyperscalers that you see here, or to any other megaport enabled data centers, or it could be to any other um, any network SaaS providers that we listed on our marketplace. Um, let's take a pause there because you know I think we, we've had some discussions with some of our clients that privately interconnect with their clients as becoming part of your portfolio. So essentially authentication rights and being able to turn up within seconds a private interconnection between their own clients. So I, I think that's something to highlight as well is productization potential of delivering your product through Megaport, especially if you're ordering, you know, 100 meg or higher access connections into your customers as, as a partner. I'm, I'm sorry, keep going, Shane. No, absolutely. I mean, and you, and you raise a good point. Right. I mean, outside of, you know, what our customers are, are, are pushing into these hyperscalers is, is the idea of, you know, leveraging dedicated secure access to any of their other customers, um, you know, environments, which may be on the Megaport, you know, network, um, as well. Um, so through one single NNI or, or port, if you will, um, you can spin up up to a hundred different virtual connections to any endpoint on our network. And, you know, connecting to their customers and partners alike, that's something that they can also, you know, manage, you know, through that one single pane of glass, um, which is ultimately going to, you know, save them on budget um, to where they can also allocate, you know, more time 
and resources um, to what's important, um, and that is um, their infrastructure um, and their environments as it stands. So, help me get a grasp. How many data centers are you guys built into today? It's an ever-growing number, it seems. Absolutely, and it's changing. I think we're adding up to 25 to 30 uh, data center deployments on a quarterly basis. Um, you know, at this time, and, and where we stand today um, is, I believe it's upwards of 530. Um, and I say that because it's constantly expanding. The number changes every day, it seems like. Um, and, you know, what kind of differentiates Megaport, you know, versus any of the other, you know, fabrics or exchanges um, out there is that, you know, we are data center neutral. So we work with 83 unique data center operators, um, you name it odds are that we do have a deployment inside of those facilities. Um, so why is that important? Well, um, you know, when it comes to building out high availability, redundant architecture, um, essentially in a matter of minutes, um, we can certainly get you to other physical on-ramps with these cloud service providers that are just not inside of, you know, an Equinix four walls, if you will. Um, as we work with all, all the large carrier hotels um, in the market as it stands today. Yeah, well, you know, we've also had success extending out from your on-net pops to the client prem or their data centers that may not be on your, you know, within your portfolio today. But, you know, 530, I think our, I think you guys were under 200 the first uh, opportunity we did with you guys. So it's amazing growth and uh, that's, that's fantastic. So I think, I think one of the critical items I see from clients is the amazing, um, it, it's almost mind-blowing, the orchestration piece. And I right. wasn't sure you got you guys be able to show that because that is jaw dropping the first time I saw it and <clears throat> within clients it seems to be pretty amazing. Right. I mean I think this slide right here really highlights, you know, um, you know, what the customer can do, you know, from one single point of access that you see here. And it's essentially just a ten gig port that you take down in, in the data center where you know our customers might have, you know, a co location facility. And they need to access right. any of the hyperscalers that we work with here today. Um, right. This slide, this slide really shows the flexibility, um, you know, of access that our, our customers essentially have from from one um, a single NNI, if you will. So let me uh, rearchitect one of the use cases we saw was, uh, you know, customer needed to get to the Oracle Cloud Exchange. They also had AWS and Azure. And they were looking with their current carrier at a couple grand uh, a circuit to interconnect into by a gig into the Oracle, and then a couple of you know 1500 here and another couple of grand for Azure, I believe. And um, you know, I suggested we collapse that down to a single architecture um, that would be a simple cross connect. So you know, their lead times with their provider to build in all the access was going to be somewhere between 120 and 180 days. Um, we, our longest pole in the tent outside of the contract, which was actually really simple, other than the client's accounting, um, was the um, getting the cross connect from the data center. So, you know, most of our vendors were finding the cross connects at the data center somewhere between 24 hours and 72. Mm -hmm. And then the orchestration piece was uh, literally, I think, about a 20 minute kickoff call with you guys um, to get that up. So, Imagine collapsing that massive project, PM assigned, all the work, and being able to orchestrate three private connections of three different clouds, all within about a 72-hour period, and all in about 15 to 20 minutes worth of your effort. So that's that's the kind of thing we've been able to do with Megaport. So sorry, I hope I didn't see the thunder show. No, you, no, you raise you raise a good point, and that's you know some of the pain or the priority main pain point that we hear you know from our customers when we are on these introductory calls um, is that you know they have a multi-cloud instance where they need to access in Azure and AWS, and they need to secure that over a dedicated a dedicated network, um, but. You know, they said that, you know, car you know the tr traditional carriers like a CenturyLink or a Level 3 or any of the Verizons, not to name drop, but, um, you know, there's some there's some burden and headache as well as some cost involved in terms of, you know, turning up those traditional uh, circuits. Um, as you had mentioned, there's a easy a 90-day to 120-day, you know, window. Um, there's also, 
uh, a number of resources that you have to allocate to track down, you know, your account management team to get those circuits stood up. Um, and to your point, Alan, it's it's taken 15 minutes to create an account on portal.megaport.com um, and then ge generating a company profile and then, you know, targeting, you know, your co-location site specific to where you can, you know, allocate in that search field and then provisioning a port um, that generates an LOA um, in under 59 seconds. Um, so now our customers can come in um, and dynamically um, create dedicated interconnectivity, um, as you'd mentioned, in under, you know, three to seven business days at the most. It's really dependent upon, you know, where that customer is at in terms of their deployments and how fast they're willing to work, um, because that's not necessarily an issue uh, with Megaport. You know, once you have that, that port in place, it's essentially point and click um, from there. Um, and then peering at the identified locations or on ramps with these cloud service providers that are located on our network. Um, so saving a lot of time, we're saving a lot of money, and we're taking a lot of burden out of the network so our customers can focus on what's important, right? And that's the applications that are ultimately driving, you know, the innovation that's uh, within the enterprise. That's pretty amazing. So not only these providers, we also have the other cloud data center. So many of our clients are running data center to data center backups between their own clusters of private cloud. Um, so we've been able to stand these up as a point an alternative or HA pair to, uh, you know, their point to point solution for their backups. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so essentially, it's really dependent upon you know where that customer is at, where we can identify a common point of presence, you know, as all of our equipment resides within the data center. Um, there's some unique stuff coming down the pipe um, in terms of where we're at from a product roadmap perspective, where we're going to be able to provide connectivity back into our private network for those branch offices where we may not be able to to meet them from an on-prem perspective. Um, but for yeah. now, yeah, but for now, what we're able to do, um, you know, if you have a common point of presence, you can essentially, you know, spin up, um, you know, a WAN environment and have deployments, you know, stood up um, in just a few days. And ultimately, we're we're seeing our customers save thousands of dollars in the meantime. And one thing to one thing to note as well is that reliability is, is also is not an issue as as we present 100% uptime SLA on all of our services um, and how we built out our network. Um, so I think that's one thing to note is okay. Well, Megaport, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a nice product and you know provides a lot of value and the fact that the speed to deployment um, as well as availability and access. Well, what does that mean in terms of you know, um, you know having a protected, you know, core network? And that's essentially what we provide over a hundred gig MPLS mesh backbone um, that is core, you know, core protected. So. Um, it's a fast reroute. If any type of, if the fiber was cut, we're automatically going to reroute that traffic and essentially under, uh, 50 milliseconds. Um, so the network is protected. Um, but the, you know, the value prop really is in, in the interface and, and what you have, um, available, um, to you. Okay. Yeah. The, um, We've been able to pull, we often pull for clients, you know, what the latencies are between data centers and, uh, you know, being able to pull those on yours, you guys have come back very well, uh, very aggressive uh, latency speeds. Yeah. And that can all be accessed. It's trans transparent online um, as well under megaport.com slash locations. Um, so where any customer can go and, and search, uh, see if we do have a common point of presence. Uh, we do have a view latency tab to where you can pull um, any endpoint in our network and also pull the, the latest latency figures that we pulled, uh, I believe it's the month prior, um, that will show those figures um, transparently to, to the end user. And so this is, this slide is essentially it, Alan. You know, it's, it's instead of waiting, you know, 30, 60, 90, 120 days, um, where you're going to have a nailed up circuit at 10 gig, we see a lot of our customers, um, Nailed up on these circuits, they're paying twenty five hundred, thirty five hundred dollars, uh, dependent upon you know the distance between A and B, right? But um, but we often see them come back and say, hey, you know, we're only pushing you know a gig or five hundred meg, and I'm paying an extra thousand dollars on a ten gig nailed up circuit. Um, you know, with Megaport, 
you know, um, outside of, you know, pointing and clicking and, and, and configuring connections, we also have a, a unique monitor, monitoring tool to where you can, you know, access, manage, and, and have visibility into the throughput that you're pushing over our network. Um, so you can right size that accordingly. Um, so if you're pushing one gig to AWS and you're only seeing, you know, 100 mega traffic, well, you can ramp that connection down to ultimately, um, you know, meet your throughput and give you the, the option to essentially pay for what you use. Um, so uh, all on a month to month billing model with no with no setup fees. Um, so that's another differentiator to, to think about um, when adopting you know, a service, you know, like Megaport or network as a service. Um, and then now you have those flexible month to month contracts where you have the ability to kind of right size your traffic accordingly. What else would you guys like to leave the audience with? Um, you know, I, I definitely want, if you have interest in Megaport, reach out to, to my team. We'll run down not only are they where you need to be, but how can we cost effectively get them to you? Um, what else, Shane, should we should we have uh, as a takeaway for everybody watching? Oh, absolutely, it's a good question. Um, you know, really, you know, there's there's a few terms that you know I always ask you know my partners to to, to keep an ear out for, um, and that's you know a direct connect with AWS, Azure, Express Route. You know, familiarize yourself with with those terms specific to these cloud service provider hyperscalers, and when you hear that, that's something that you should be thinking. Um, uh, Megaport is, you know, not only from a data center perspective um, and, and where we're at as a footprint perspective as we're growing out, we're also expanding our cloud on ramps um, ultimately to get our customers closest to their edge devices. Um, so when you hear those terminologies, that's something that you should be thinking about is, is Megaport because um, that's something that we do really well, well in. Okay. Well, man, I appreciate you guys' time today, and um, you know, keep delivering well for my clients. I've been uh, just absolutely happy as heck with you guys. So, and there's not all my providers I can say the same about. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we like to do more, Alan. We appreciate you having us on. All right. Well, yes, thank, thank you, guys. You, Alan. All right. Thanks.